Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on this episode, well, I'm going to be giving some advice. Well, maybe not more so advice, but maybe my own personal explanation of uh, the current situation and one of the main problems, if not the main problem, with the format of Commander. So, let's jump into it. And actually, the unsolicited advice is kind of uh, interesting based on the question in the post. So, on Reddit, the user Gus and Ghosts uh, said, Why are there so many issues with Commander? Hey everyone, I expect some downvotes on this one. I started Magic playing 60 cards format, mostly modern. I went to LGS and got to talk about Commander. The format been sold to me like fun format of the game. I swear that I've never seen ma that many complaints about the game before getting into Commander. I don't know if the format is the problem or if it's the community. People whine every game, are angry when they lose, get mad when they are targeted, don't respect other players around the table, give unsolicited advices like this, etc. Maybe I'm just unlucky to have come across many issues reading online and playing in real life. I rarely see positive stories about Commander. Does anyone feel the same? Now, well, Gus and Ghosts, um, yeah, here's my unsolicited advice for you. <laughs> Which kind of, again, kind of ironic based on the post where you actually even mentioned uns unsolicited advice. So, yeah, I mean, the one of the problems with Commander, obviously, is just that unlike any other format, it is the most... Um, different when it comes to the approach of every single player again when it comes to a format like say standard everyone has the exact same understanding of the format right basically it is a competitive format you are trying to win every single game there are no rules against what you can and can't do other than when it comes to actually breaking magic rules there's no like taboos within the game but things that you shouldn't be doing there's no players making you feel bad when you do stuff i mean maybe maybe they do but still like Everyone has the exact same expect expectation going into the game. And, you know, again, formats like standard, formats like modern, etc., etc., etc. When you go into a multiplayer format like Commander that is more broad in its appeal to players and the way that players want to play it, there are, there's like friction, I guess I would say, when it comes to players kind of butting heads, uh, not necessarily just, you know, outright, but maybe some passive aggressive passive aggressiveness as well. When it comes to just having different approaches and different thoughts of what Commander should and should not be. Again, I've done episodes before. I think I did one with Eddie back, you know, in the day about, you know, like taboos, essentially, with Commander. And just how, again, there are certain things that they're not necessarily written in the rules, but you shouldn't, shouldn't be doing if you're playing Commander. And again, they're not having the exact same rule set, essentially. I mean, you are playing for the same rules, but not the exact same again like technical un you know unwritten rules essentially that you're playing from that can be very frustrating and it can be very confusing especially for new players getting into it and when it comes to playing i would say at an lgs or you know players you haven't played before you know at lgs at you know um at a, a magic con or whatnot you're playing with people that you've never played with never met before you might not understand what their expectations are before the game is and even if you have that chat beforehand and you have, you know, a good, uh, you know, chat before, and like, where, like, I, I always say that, you know, Commander is a social format, just talk, and that can solve a lot of issues. It can't solve every issue, though. Again, you're going to go sit down at the table, you're going to say, okay, like, okay, what kinds of decks do you like to play? You know, what kind of general power level, essentially? And then kind of digging further into that and being like, okay, like, around what turn does your deck tend to win? Are there any certain kind of play styles that you might not like to play against or with? You know, what kind of expectations can we set? There still can be with that first initial one, even if you have the best conversation ever to get it all set up, you can still not be on the exact same page. And then some kind of, you know, friction can happen during the game, essentially, where, again, expectations for at least one side might be broken. So, yeah, I mean, there can be those kind of different issues. I would say that kind of like the further along you get in your commander career, the better you are at kind of judging these things ahead of time, number one. Number two the more likely you are to maybe find your own play group and everyone kind of has those similar expectations. You kind of understand what the rest of your play group is going to be doing. So yeah, I mean, there are definitely ways to improve this. That being said, uh, the kind of inherent problem with the format really, I don't think ever can just actually be solved because again, rule zero is, is basically just like, hey, you know, that it's just like everyone's gonna be playing the way that they want to play essentially. I mean, that's not exactly what it is, but basically again, Commander is a format where it's just very open, and because of that, the expectations are different for every player. I mean, let's just go through some quick examples, okay? Like, Brawl Chief of Compliance. Is this an okay commander to play? Yeah, I mean, many would say it is. That being said, hey, um, how many counter spells are you allowed to have in a Brawl deck? I mean, should there actually be a limit? Technically, no. You know, if you are playing in a competitive format, right, one-on-one, -on -one, the expectations are that you're doing anything to win. 
you can put as many counter spells as would be most efficient to actually have in a brawl deck again brawl says hey in store spells you cast as well as the cast whenever a spell or ability control counters a spell draw a card if you discard a card you are incentivized to counter a ton of spells to be like no you're not doing that no you're not doing that no you're not doing that now will some players find that absolutely annoying yeah and that can cause some friction in the game now are you allowed to say include 10 counter spells are you allowed to say include 15 20 30 What's the amount of counter spells that you are allowed to include in a brawl deck that players should not be upset about? And uh, yeah, that, that number differs depending on you know person to person, player group to play group. And even if you ask someone ahead of time in the game, you know, hey, is it okay if I play in my brawl deck? I've got 20 counter spells in it. Is that okay with you? Players, again, maybe to make you, you feel like that's okay, might just say yes, even though internally they're just, you know, again, the friction's going to be there. They might think they're going to be okay with it, and then all of a sudden their spells are getting countered, and they feel like they're being targeted, and then they might just, you know, just get internally, uh, you know, upset, or maybe externally upset with you, essentially, during the game, and is that fair? No, not really, especially since you already, you know, set those expectations ahead of time, but again, there just is this inherent friction that might be in Commander, because again, it is a format that is just so open. I mean, also, I ran into this problem when I was first in my uh, you know, commander career and I was building my Selenia deck. I thought it was so clever to say, okay, Selenia can be bounce back to your hand, pay two life, bounce back to your hand, cool, all right? I've got a life swap kind of strategy. My goal is to keep the board clear so that I essentially can say, you know what? When I'm ready to win, I'm ready to win. My opponents can't stop me from doing that. I will wipe the board again and again and again. And I had like 15 plus Wraths in the deck. I mean, Wrath of God wasn't a budget Wrath at the time. I don't think it still is actually. But still, I had a ton of Wraths in the deck. And I was thinking, okay, well, since I'm coming from a budget perspective, then my wraths might not be all that efficient. And I'm just trying to, you know, do what is best for this commander. That should be okay, right? I mean, the problem is that, uh, no. I mean, with many people in commander, that might not be okay because having the board wraths again and again and again and again and again can lead to a very, very long and somewhat annoying game. And players might not like that. So again, even though it's the most efficient build and most synergistic build, that doesn't mean that it's okay to necessarily play with certain groups. So again, it's not illegal. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no rule. The rules can be put down and says you can only have 10 wraths in your deck, which still might be a lot, but you can only have 10 wraths in your deck. That's not an actual rule. So because of that, yeah, there's just kind of just, it's up in the air on what some players are okay with, what other players aren't okay with. And literally, unless you had like this massive spreadsheet system that was like things that I'm okay with and everyone filled it all out about like number of wraths. Okay, number of counter spells, okay unless you did that and literally before every match like compared the, where you line up and then figured out what decks to play because of that which would take forever yeah you're not gonna find you know the exact kind of perfect place versus again if you're playing standard cool each of you know the expectations and then everyone has the exact same expectations and they're all okay with it next up like joy weather captain yet another mistake from early in my career right i was just i love the artifact synergy with joyra and I, this, I think this was the deck that I had to have spent the most time in tweaking it and making it just like absolutely perfect again. Not perfect, but I mean, as perfect as I could make it again within my budget. Uh, and yeah, it was an absolutely disgusting deck. Whenever you cast a story spell, draw a card. Yeah, I, I went all in on artifacts. I reduced the cost of artifacts. I just had artifacts, storm shenanigans going, casting artifacts after artifacts, after artifacts, drawing so far down, bouncing them all back to my hand, getting those cost users back in play, casting more for free, drawing even more, and just having a really, really long turn. And understanding that hey this is really cool for me and like i put so much effort into this deck but other players might not be okay with that other players might not want to sit and watch me play solitaire for 10 15 minutes and at the end of that solitaire my, i might not even win i might not even i just might have drawn into my deck not found a finisher and all of a sudden everyone's just sitting around for 15 minutes watching me do this and there wasn't kind of like a resolution to that so yeah kind of like those those things that you learn throughout like okay what's okay what's not okay Again, it is completely group dependent. It's completely person dependent. And again, that's kind of just the, the roll of the dice that you get when you walk into LGS and you're playing with people that you've never met before. But again, if you keep playing with those same people, you keep kind of learning their, you know, ins and outs and just basically, okay, what's okay with them? What kinds of decks can I bring to the table that is okay with them? And just making adjustments from there. And it does get easier again if you do find your own group. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't play LGSs, you definitely should, but it's kind of understanding that different expectation that, hey, you you kind of know after a certain you know amount of time you know what's okay with your group what you can and can't play and uh being able to change that you know based on your lgs you might just want to have some more i'd say safe decks if that's okay moving on hoffrey ghost forge this is yet another one that i mean my play group for the most part is okay with something like this but like threaten effects even players don't like their stuff touched and uh i have no problem with a threaten effect but my Hoffrey deck is all about them. Basically, okay, Spiritual Control, plus one, one, Trampled Haste. Whenever the non-token creature control dies, exile. If you do create tokens, copy that creature, except a spirit. 
other than interstellar types. And when it leaves the battlefield, return the exile cards to your graveyard. Actually, they um they had to errata of that because I don't know if Wizards didn't realize what was going to happen with this commander. It's not your graveyard. It's uh, the owner's graveyard because, well, yeah, threaten a creature, sacrifice it with a free sacrifice outlet. You get a token copy of that creature. So yeah, even though it's a temporary steal, it's kind of like a permanent steal because you're like, okay, I got that creature and then I sacrifice, I get a token copy of it. So I have it, you don't. And so yeah, threaten effects, theft effects. Some players just don't like across the board at all and won't play against and just get upset if you touch any of their stuff. Now, again, am I, am I okay with that? Yes. And are many of my players okay with that? Yes. But someone on LGS might not be. So kind of just being aware of like the ins and outs of all those ta that taboos in Commander. And there are so many taboos in Commander. It can be frustrating. It can be painful. And there can be just a lot of friction to it. Next up, like Filigree Sages. Uh, this is a card that I went back and forth so much for actually including in my Garth deck because it's very easy to combo with this for Garth. And some players are not okay with combos, even if they include like eight cards. <laughs> a 2-3 Vidalcan Wizard that costs three and a blue. It has paid two and a blue untapped target artifact. Now in my Garth deck, that's all about untapped effects and stuff like that. Basically is getting a indestructible land into play, which is an artifact. And then having, you know, a ton of enchant lands on it that can help to tap for more mana, eventually tapping for like eight plus mana. I mean, all you need is it to tap for basically four for this to combo. You just pay your mana. You essentially have this untap, you know, the land, do it again, 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 infinite mana. Some players don't like infinite combos, regardless again of how many cards it takes to combo. Again, that might be like a six card combo. No, not six. I mean like four, whatever it is, four or five card combo. Some players aren't okay with that at all. They are not okay with any combo. doesn't matter how many pieces there are to it. doesn't matter if it's accidental. Like you just happen to have two cards in your deck that happen to combo and you didn't even realize that until the situation comes out. So players are not okay with that at all. Others are. Others are okay with any kind of a combo. It just really depends on your play group. It really depends on the players you're playing against. And again, it's something that can help with discussions ahead of time. But uh, again, there's only so much you can really discuss ahead of time to actually get and pinpoint down what every single player is okay with. And again, hey, do I have a deck that doesn't have this, but has this, but doesn't have that? It can be tough, and that is completely understandable. I mean, next up, I saw this at an LGS recently, and it was definitely like kind of like a a pain point within that player. Just like, should I should I do this? So this player had a Terrasodon out. All right, nine nine trampling elephant for eight mana. This was late in the game. Enters the battlefield, destroy up to three target non-creature permanents for each permanent opponent grave this way. It's control creates a three three green alpha creature token. So yeah, again, a great removal spell, one that you can utilize on your own things, your opponent's things. And when it says non-creature, obviously that does include lands. Now, right away, they did not target lands because only just running three things. There were, you know, some big non-creature things on the board they needed to deal with. So they did that. That being said, their next turn, they cast Ray of Application and they kicked it. And so they kicked it, and now they're gonna get a token on the battlefield. It's copy that creature. But if it's kicked, you get five tokens instead. So getting five tokens of Terracidon, that is massive. First up, you've got, what, 45 extra power coming into play across, five, uh, what, five bodies? So it's huge. And on top of that, that is 15 non-creature permanents you can just destroy. Now, you are replacing them with 3-3 three, three Elephants, but still. This player, who I believe it was a one-on-one -on -one situation at the end of the game, essentially, was trying to figure out if it was okay with them to actually target their opponent's lands. Now, mass land destruction is something that is very much frowned upon in Commander. That being said, when it comes to ending the game, yeah, I'm pretty much fine with it. Many out there are pretty much fine with it. Some aren't. So, yes, there is that kind of pain point as well. We're like, in some situations, it's okay. Some it isn't. And kind of learning those nuances and with that player specifically, like, is that okay? It's tough. So, and again, in other formats... That would just be like, oh, good job, shake hands, you know, the game over, I lose because I've got no lands left and I'm not going to be able to stop you from doing what you want to do. They still have a giant army, but not as giant as the other players. So, yeah, there are just so many nuances to it that it can definitely be very frustrating. And the friction can just be just like so great that, yeah, there's just kind of just like awkward tension in the air when you're playing with some players because you don't know exactly what to expect. I mean, again, like Time Warp, a card that is not banned in Commander. But a card that is very problematic to some because they don't like extra turns at all. Target player decks extra turn for this one. Okay, cool. And the problem with this one versus other ones is that this doesn't exile. So, yeah, there's plenty of ways to get it back. Cast it again. Eternal Witness, you know, bounce to the Eternal Witness. Recast the Eternal Witness. Blink the Eternal Witness. Get it back. Cast it again. Take all the extra turns again like Solitaire. Are extra turn spells banned? No. I mean, I guess like Time Walk's banned. But, like... <laughs> the, the, but most of them are not banned. And yeah, they are seen it from some as problematic. Some even have a problem with like extra combats as well. So yeah, it just depends on the player that you're playing with and against. And yeah, against these little nuances can just really rub players the wrong way. Next up, I mean like Decimate. This is an example I like to bring up when players are like, oh, like I always make the optimized decisions no matter what. Like I'm not trying to baby other players. And it's like, okay, you play Decimate and it's early on in the game. 
and uh, one player is a little ahead, maybe they were the first player to start, you're going to start an artifact, creature, enchantment, and land. If they've got all those and they're ahead of everyone else, are you going to target every single one of their things? Are you going to destroy four of one player's things? Or are you going to make an in, you know, an inefficient decision? You're not going to destroy all their things. You're going to just try to kind of like spread out the, uh, the actual pain points to players. Are you actually going to do that? Are you actually going to change your decisions based on that? And the answer usually is yes, because players are cognizant of how someone else feels essentially. And by really, you know, <laughs> destroying four things one player has, you're setting them back to the stone age. And, uh, and yeah, that player might not like you so much after that. Again, especially if you're an LGS, you might not want to upset that player. So again, like what's okay in commander and what isn't is just a giant question mark that no one can truly pinpoint down okay again because it just depends on the individual person it depends on so many factors so many people and then like the final example i'll bring up is like laboratory maniac okay alternative win conditions like this some players love them some players build entire decks around all of them other players don't like them at all they see it as kind of like cheating the system and also just like an unfair way to win especially kind of with these like lab man uh that's oracle especially that's oracle with the uh, you know uh, different ones anyways you would draw a card while your library so cards didn't even the game instead so kind of just turning the game on its head and being like oh okay like yeah my goal isn't do anything with you it's just hey get rid of my library draw a card and i win and of course there's easy combos that you can do with this there's very easy things you can do with this to actually just win some players don't like again combos some players don't like alternative wing conditions how are you supposed to know all that unless you have a 30 minute conversation before the game again you can have a conversation you know before the game to hit like the main points but there's definitely things that you're going to miss that might just irk a player the wrong way and you just might not know that ahead of time and again the longer you play the more kind of you are the more able you are to kind of judge these things and also the more able you are to say well okay like i've played these players before i know what kinds of decks they like what kinds they don't like what they're okay with but again if you're just showing up to lgs and playing with a random person you've played with before yeah there's still gonna be some pain points that you're probably gonna hit and, and they might hit with you and again just uh, power level scales are different there's so many different factors yeah overall again uh i think the the reason why commander can be again frustrating for some players to get into is because I, everyone's different i guess is, is kind of the main thing right everyone has different expectations and commander is the most I, I guess i'd say like inviting format when it comes to like everyone can play essentially however they want but with that comes a bunch of friction right because everyone has different expectations everyone has different thoughts on what commander is and should be whereas other formats are pretty just laid out they're just like hey this is standard you want to win your opponent wants to win here are the cards you can play. Here are the banned cards. You can't play with those. Do whatever you need to win, essentially. And then that's fine. So again, the expectation coming in is the exact same in those formats, whereas the expectation for Commander is very much up in the air. Again, what Commander type taboos does someone actually agree with? What Commander taboos does someone not agree with? It's a format that can be... Um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And again, I think that's what makes Commander fun because of all the different nuances to it. But again, yes, I definitely understand it can make the format somewhat frustrating, especially when you're starting off. So yeah, uh, Gus and Ghosts, I hope that uh, this unsolicited advice and unsolicited feedback helped you out uh, and others out there that might have been having this same kind of thought on what the main problem with Commander might be. So yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all this. What do you think the main problem with Commander is? If you think there is a problem at all, so yeah, let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.